Gary Gensler suggests again that proof-of-stake tokens might be securities, and in the Voyager bankruptcy case, we're seeing that the SEC is getting smacked down by the judge on multiple fronts. We'll take a closer look at what the judge has said in the official filings that have come out in the last few days. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Gary Gensler finds himself at odds with Braston Benham, chair of the CFTC, about some of the considerations when it comes to a security versus a commodity and certain digital assets. Gary Gensler's doubling down now on his opinion that proof-of-stake tokens could meet the definition of securities under the Howey test, thus bringing them under his agency's regulatory authority. Speaking to reporters after a commission vote, just yesterday, Gensler said securities laws could be triggered because investors anticipate a return when they purchase tokens underpinned by a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. Whatever they're promoting and putting into a protocol and locking up their tokens in a protocol, a protocol that's often a small group of entrepreneurs and developers are developing, I would just suggest that each of these token operators seek to come into compliance, and the same with the intermediaries, he said. According to the block, his remarks came after reporters asked him for his thoughts on statements made by Rostin Benham last week arguing that Ether is a commodity and should be regulated by his agency. The two have been at odds over which group should take precedence in regulating the crypto markets. Gensler said Bitcoin is a commodity, but has been reluctant to relinqu uh, relinquish control or at least the possibility of future control over any other crypto, including Ether, and has claimed that the vast majority of the thousands of existing cryptos are securities. In September of 2022, after the Ethereum blockchain upgrade to proof of stake, known as the merge, Gensler suggested that proof of stake tokens could be investment contracts and subject to securities laws. Last week, his argument that proof of stake tokens are securities got an unexpected assist in the form of a lawsuit filed against KuCoin by the New York Attorney General's office. In the suit, the AG argued that that exchange is violating U.S. securities laws by offering tokens, including Ether, that meet the definition of a security without registering with the proper regulatory bodies, in that case, the state attorney general's off, uh, office. Despite Gensler and Benham's public back and forth, the New York attorney general suit is the first time a regulator has claimed in court that Ether is a security, albeit in a state court rather than a federal court. Really interesting. I've seen some hypothesizing on Twitter that perhaps they are combining forces behind the scenes, the uh, New York Attorney General's office and the SEC to try and get something going there. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now, the Voyager bankruptcy case is really interesting because of the take that we've seen from the judge. So the judge here has really stood up against some government overreach from the various agencies. It's been impressive to see Judge Wiles here. And I want to highlight a few things he's said and uh, put into documents here in the Voyager bankruptcy. So the first one we'll look at here is from the decision on the confirmation for uh, them to go ahead and proceed with that Binance U.S. acquisition. And then we'll look at a second document briefly. This was uh, when he denied the SEC's motion for a stay pending the appeal. So again, the SEC trying to hold up the process and keep funds from getting back to customers. That's what they think protecting the investors looks like. Let me know if you think that that is really what they should be doing. But here, this is what he's put, you know, pen to paper and has in the official ruling. We'll look at just a single page here. It's about a 50-page filing. There's some really good stuff in here throughout. But this is where I want to really key in because in the SEC versus Ripple, you could see them referencing this as we get anything further on. If this were to go all the way to trial, there's some pretty damning evidence here straight from a bankruptcy judge's mouth. 
um, to the SEC and what they're doing. So let, let me read this through. It's only a page, and I think it's really worthwhile. He writes, let me say at the outset and as background to my rulings that I cannot think of another case I've had that comes before me in quite a setting like this one does. I am aware that there are some people who question the very concept of cryptocurrencies and the whole idea of cryptocurrency investment and trading. I note that no party in this case has taken such a position and it's not for me to decide whether particular investments are good ideas or not but it certainly provides an unusual backdrop to this bankruptcy case. I'm also aware that Voyager operated and Binance US currently operates in a regulatory environment that at best can be described as highly uncertain. Uh, uncertain. There are firms that operate as crypto brokers or exchanges and have done so for several years without being subject to clear and well-defined regulatory requirements. Regulators themselves cannot seem to agree as to whether cryptocurrencies are commodities that may be subject to regulation by the CFTC or whether they are securities that are subject to securities laws, or neither, or even on what criteria, criteria should be applied in making the decision. This uncertainty has persisted despite the fact that crypto exchanges have been around for a number of years. What more could be said to bolster Ripple's argument in the fair notice defense? You have a judge who's looked through all of this. They've had hearings. This has been an ongoing back and forth in this bankruptcy case since last summer. And he's put this in his documentation that this regulatory environment at best can be described as highly uncertain. So there you have it. Does that really Prove that Ripple got fair notice? I don't think so. I think the SEC has kept the waters murky. And as you can see, this certainly is reiterated here by this judge. And we've seen similar commentary throughout the course of the last two and a half years almost that we've been discussing the SEC versus Ripple. Now, if you continue down, he says, if the current regulatory environment can be characterized as uncertain, the future regulatory environment can only be characterized in my mind as virtually unknowable. There have been differing proposals in Congress to adopt different types of regulatory regimes for crypto trading. Meanwhile, the SEC has filed some actions against particular firms, Ripple, with regard to particular cryptocurrencies, XRP, and those actions suggest that a wider regulatory assault may be forthcoming. Look at the library case as another example. The CFTC seems to have taken some positions that are at odds with the SEC's views. Just how this will all sort itself out, how the pending actions relating to cryptocurrencies will be decided, and just what issues might be raised in future regulatory actions and how they will affect individual firms or the industry as a whole is unknown. So there you have it. The judge himself saying that it's not known, it wasn't known, and it cannot be known for future instances because of a lack of clarity. Certainly an argument for a lack of fair notice, if I've ever seen one. Now let's turn our attention from that lengthy document, which I will link below if you want to look in more detail, to what was just filed uh, in regard to the SEC's motion for stay pending the appeal. This was denied, so the SEC's uh, not doing so well when it comes to the courts. And here's some of the language here. He says, the same judge, uh, government papers exaggerate and in some places mischaracterize what I have done and the authorities on which I have relied and in other instances rely on hyperbole or on straw man arguments. So when you see a judge, again, put this in a document that he's putting out that certainly leads you to believe that he does not believe that they're following a faithful allegiance to the law, just like what Judge Netburn said previously in the SEC versus Ripple case. So the SEC is certainly facing a little bit of an obstacle when it comes to these judges. They're able to see through some of the BS that's happening and the lack of clarity for certain in crypto markets driven by a lack of regulatory certainty. So I thought these would be interesting points to you. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, drop a like. It helps the channel a ton. It helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date. Everything linked down below if you want to check it out in more detail. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. 